Is there, I, now I've kind of gotten into a routine more than more than anything else, which is I, there's, I mean, every day I'm doing something flat earth, but now I've got, you know, like, so Mondays, I'll go through dailies, maybe release a video. Tuesdays, I have Strange World. Wednesdays, I have Hot Potatoes. Uh, but also have to simultaneously do a promo for the Colorado people. And then I got to do a promo for the convention, you know, the conference that's coming up. I release that on Saturdays. Do I do a mailbag show? Probably. How many interviews do I have? And so it really, it varies as far as what I do in like hour to hour, but I'm going through YouTube and the general mainstream media things constantly. And then I've got, I, but most of the tips I get is people say, well, have you seen this? And a lot of times I haven't because people are way better at finding, you know, there, there's people all over in different time zones that are waking up and finding cool little things. But that's what I basically do every single day. I make vids, I do interviews, I recommend stuff and filter a whole bunch of media and see where this the hell this thing's going. Now, you did manage to scrounge up a girlfriend, did you not? Did I not hear that? I did. Although, <laughs> um, and, and I, no, I was, uh, I was, um, I'm not laughing at you, Mark. I'm laughing that suddenly we have become that show. Just go. No, no, That's no, awesome. no, it's okay. No, <laughs> no, has, no I, I met, boy, well, as a matter of fact, my last girlfriend I met through a flat earth mixer. And of all things, go for really? it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a flat earth mixer in Seattle last year and on Earth Day. And I met, I met some wonderful people during that flat earth mixer. And I, yes, I did have a girlfriend. Uh, but that has recently run its course. So very recently. And you guys are probably the first people to, to really hear that. <laughs> so <laughs> well, there you go. We broke there you go. it. Right there's your, there's your exclusive. Right. Nobody's asked recently. Exclusive. But, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I know relationships can be hard for flat earthers. Uh, well, I will say this. And, and in fact, there was a video made on an, on by a, a, another flat earther says I'm never was a guy that said I'm never going to date a, a non flat earth girl again or something like that where yeah if you're not dating a flat earther and you're a flat earther you're going to have problems that wasn't the case here she, she was a flat earther that means how literally how, how we met but I've run into so many people that have called or emailed that have said yeah I've got problems you know my husband and or wife don't won't I shouldn't say and or husband or wife <laughs> Uh, won't they don't want to talk about it? It's a subject we cannot bring up at the dinner table, and because honestly, it's it's so far out there that the pro if the problem isn't that person, it's that person you're you're worried about being in a group with other people, because like oh please don't let my husband bring up flat Earth, please don't let him bring up flat Earth. Like let me tell you about flat Earth since I got six shots of vodka in me, and I get kicked out of the table quite regularly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and so it is. It is an interesting thing. So no, will I will I date a non flat earther? No, probably not, at this point because it's too it's too big and and it leads into too many potential issues down the road. I mean, what do you what do you say to the person's family? What do you what do you say at mixed gatherings or or their coworkers or whatever it is? You know, until this thing is widely until this thing blows open entirely, uh, there's no there's no safe ground. There's no there's no uh, safe harbor at the moment. Yeah, I tend to stay quiet a lot. Yeah, my my in-laws bait me. They know <laughs> what I'm into, but they they bait me, <laughs> me. and they, they 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 say stuff like um, we had a little barbecue here last weekend, and um, beautiful nights. You can see every star hemisphere. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and they were sitting there. They they know what I'm into. And um, they were sitting there baiting me, and in my own stuff, my wife would uh, look at me and I'd say, "No comment, <laughs> no <laughs> comment." Yeah, cause, yeah, yeah, you could just well, see them. They they wanted to start, start a move, but it wasn't a time. I'm mean, just sitting there at a family barbecue to bloody for me to start sort of stuff. So, so I, I just it's no comment, no comment. Nice. My family yeah. will will bait me with space things. So they'll uh, say, yeah, I heard a new story about the ISS, blah, blah, blah. And then like like three or four heads will turn my way, <laughs> like just waiting for me to, to you know, but I, you know, I'm, I'm savvy enough now. And it was like, yeah, I'm not falling for that. 
you know you don't you don't have to be that overt about it but at the same time like i gave um my brother-in-law one of my listeners who who converted who was a big space guy he actually had a uh, an actual bumper sticker from 1984 when john glenn was running for president and had it autographed on the back and he just gave it away because you know what's it worth to a flat earth or nothing and so and i gave it to my brother-in-law for his birthday and he couldn't have been more happy he was just <laughs> thrilled and he just didn't get he didn't get the other side of it though it's like dude i'm giving it to you because it's not worth anything anymore you just haven't figured that out yet and... you like this one too james um they also uh, <laughs> there's a movie out recently is the um uh with, i think it was the holocaust it's a holocaust movie in the and they were baiting me with that because um, they know I'm, in, I'm into all the and I said to them, well, there's a lot of evidence out there that, that um, six million um, Jewish people didn't die in the Holocaust. And as soon as I mentioned that it might not have happened, even though they brought it up, you should have seen the anger <laughs> in their face. They brought it up. I said, oh, I'm not. Is. I'm not. I'm not doing it. But they brought it up, and I just said, "My, you know, I haven't got a. I really haven't got an opinion either way, I suppose." But they brought it up. I had. I gave a small opinion, and the anger in their faces when I brought up it may not have happened the way it was portrayed. It was, you know, and that's why you know you got to pick your times, I suppose, with, with when you um. You know what I, I guess, but you know. you know, you know, what I found is different with the flyer thing than different than any other conspiracy is that no matter who, cause, you know, we've all heard of. I mean, I've heard so many different arguments now that even if it's family members, even if it's people I trust or people I've known for a long, long time, their arguments I've never wavered, not once. Meaning, and you don't find that in really any other conspiracies because the conviction of the flat Earth community is so absolute. I mean, you think that's, again, it shows you the power of this thing where, I mean, science gets angry and they, you know, they dig in their heels and they, they seem about as convinced as anything, right? But so what does it take to go step up against that and still out conviction science? That's, that's amazing to me. I love watching people do that. Just fearless. It's like, well, it doesn't matter what science article they read, what is out there. They just step up and say, you know what? It's nothing. You got nothing, and you know, it's 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 inspiring. I love it. Well, this this brings me on to um, a question I had um, put forward for you. Mm -hmm. um, after two years or whatever, I, I mean, some of us are, are, are people that go out and test things. Some of us that research things. Some of us that are, you know look into the scriptures. All this sort of stuff. Like after two years now, what what would be your uh, empirical sort of evidence that you are living on a flat, stationary Earth? That's just it. the The gatekeepers have locked it down so tight that I don't know. Let me let me let me take it a different way. I don't think you're going to ever see without uh, the, the biggest of all exposures, you know, the, the proof of a flat earth, you know, only mainstream can release the flat earth at this point. But if you want to destroy flat earth, you'd have to release something that has never been released before, which is video proof, you know, kind of the old argument. If there's no video, it didn't happen. That's the only old, but you know, definitely HD uh, high res, footage long term that can be analyzed by people that are really good at that thing and everybody comes to the same consensus which is it seems absolutely genuine that so w w would you say at the moment then that <clears throat> your um your overwhelming belief that it's a flat stationary earth or enclosed earth or whatever yeah. is um is is basically based on trust, faith, and belief. Well, it is, at but the moment. It, at the moment it is, but at the same time, it is, remember, because 
I still do treat this like a court case. And it's not that, and flat earth people will tell you this, where it's not that we're proving the flat earth as much as we are creating massive uh, reasonable doubt in the globe. And it's hundreds of evidence. Again, isn't it? Yeah, it's so it's so easy to tear apart the globe that if it was a court case, you'd you'd have to you know the the globe would be in trouble you know depending on what what angle you were going to take in a court case well, because there's just nothing. Court case, then NASA wouldn't be allowed to give evidence because they're an unreliable yeah. witness. Exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, their evidence would be shot down. They would their opening arguments. That's the thing. In a court case, NASA would have a fantastic opening argument. They'll say, we're going to show you this, and we're going to show you this. But then when they show it to you, they, they say, you know, we, we validate it, and we say it's not even there. And they go, okay, okay well, well, we'll show you this instead. And then you just keep the rinse and repeat again and again, and all of a sudden you realize, again, there's, there's nothing there. There's just nothing. There was a British guy, I can't remember, he was like a, a hardcore parkour guy. And he said that it's amazing how, th when you get to the NASA evidence, how thin, how just, how mm. thin it really is. And that's, that is the truth. There's just so not you, You're sort of saying really is, I mean, and I, I do agree, is that the, the, um, the overwhelming evidence in favor of the flat stationary Earth yeah. is the overwhelming lack of evidence for a spinning ball exactly exactly and every one of the things that we bring up and, and i don't care what it is you know if, if it's antarctica if it's the curvature if it's iss if it's the apollo stuff van allen belts what the, the the coriolis effect whatever it is and no one of these things proves a flat earth you know the the moon temperature thing you know not, none of these things prove a flat earth but they all point towards it and at the very least, they, they tend point... to disprove the ball for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they point away from the globe, things that should not be there. The 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 example I love giving is the the moon, the self illuminated moon, the the moon temperature thing. I go, the moonlight is cold. I go, there's all sorts of fun little tests. They're easy. They're cheap. Anyone can do them as long as it's a clear night out. And does that prove that the that the Earth is flat? No, but it absolutely puts a huge question mark in the relationship between the sun and the moon that we've been told. Uh, pretty much forever and it does i mean what it does is is says that every single science book we've ever read is wrong right and is is um who knows whether they're deliberately wrong or not but where in in terms of proof of the flat stationary earth where where do you stand on gyroscopes the, then the gyroscopes is a good one i i like it you know science they can still f kind of worm their way out of it a little bit where they can say well you know what adjust this way adjust via barometric pressure or with the tied to the altimeter or they'll say it's not even a problem it's again it's the dumbing down of the of the lowest common denominator which is the lowest common denominator just doesn't get it they they look at it and they don't understand what it's supposed to do that it's not immediately instantaneous to them as far as what what the ramifications are and no, so it's like, all right, well, I mean, I like the altimeter, but if Joe Lunchbox on the street doesn't get it, nothing, nothing I can do. The, the one I throw at him more often than others, again, we want a reasonable doubt thing. I throw at him the, uh, the core of the earth argument. And I say, look, and this is something I've, I've been kind of digging into recently, which no, no play on words there, where I said, um, the core of the earth. You, uh, you, you know, everyone can open any science book anywhere, anywhere, and you'll should see the cross section of the earth. And there's no disclaimer at the bottom of that cross section saying it's just an artist rendering. We really don't know what, what is below eight miles. And science come back to, well, what's your point? What's your point? I go, my problem is this. Since you don't have that disclaimer at the bottom of your page, any eight-year-old kid that looks at it believes it as gospel. And they're going to keep believing it. And, and once they, they, how many years of school they make it through, once they get out of school, it's absolutely true. Even though science will say in Wikipedia and other little publications in small fine print that we're just extrapolating. We really don't know what's down there. So why put, out the, why put out the diagram? And they say, well, okay, well, that's just the core of the earth. I'm going, then who's to say that when you finally 
after 450 years, after you finally got up high enough to look at the pitcher, again, stealing a line from, from Matt Boylan here, when you finally got up high enough to take a shot, would you tell the people? There's a great Gary Larson, if you guys remember the Far Side cartoons from, from back yes. in the day. Yes. Gary Larson cartoon. There's a single one where two astronauts are looking at the Earth from, I don't know, a million miles away. And it's a children's balloon. And they, one guy looks to each other and goes, yeah, we really should keep this one under wraps. And <laughs> that's, that's, that's how science would approach it. They're not going to tell anybody. They wouldn't do it. Do not think for a second. And I know I don't have that much time left, but I, I, I got to get this message out here to people that may be listening and just don't understand what I'm talking about here. Don't think that science is absolutely on this pinnacle of integrity. They won't do they won't be influenced by different things other than empirical data. They, science can absolutely be influenced by money or politics or peer pressure or you name it. They're just like anybody else. They're no different than any other institution or corporation. And corporations, as we know, will lie for money. I use the, the flat, uh, the, um, I'm sorry, the, I was gonna say flat club, the fight club analogy. And people miss this in the movie, and I re you know, they really don't get it because it seems kind of complex. And that is, he's talking about, because the guy did for a living, he did uh, anal analysis of car crashes. And he would decide, he would recommend to the company whether, if there was enough car crashes in a certain time frame, should they do a recall, you know, on a part. Like, let's say the steering wheel locked up and people died, right? Well, if the price of the lawsuit settlements is less than the price of a recall, they don't do the recall. And you don't, if you guys out there don't get what I'm saying, I'm saying is it's all about the money. In a perfectly ethical world, you do the recall. But in, in our world, when it all comes down to money, you do whatever the stockholder, whatever benefits the shareholders the most. That if, so if it's a public damage. company. You, you oh, that's the one that Ken's didn't, uh, when I talk to people who just can't go, why, 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 when you finally show them the amount of money that NASA makes per year and say that alone is enough of a why, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The it, it, money, money does it. That's all it takes. And, and, so, you know, we'll, we'll take it one step further in money. And again, shows you how big this thing is. It's, this thing is so big that even money has its limitations, meaning... They, it was so big, they couldn't even, regardless of the billions of dollars you could make in resourcing Antarctica, you know, the landmass that we call Antarctica, the billions of dollars there, they chose to completely throw out the money equation and said, you know what, it's not worth the hassle of dealing with the corporations and the questions and potentially, you know, tying off loose ends type thing. So, this, you know, and, and again, most conspiracies that are out there are tied to money in some way, shape, or form. How, how much out of the 19 billion do you reckon they spend a year? Oh, quite a bit, believe it or not. I mean, you still have to pay all the wrench turners and all the all the tech guys, and you know, there's a lot of people that get employed. I mean, yeah, the, it, it'd be in the billions. Oh yeah, billions, the billions. Be for billions. Yeah, yeah, it'd be in but, the billions. But but do yeah. they spend? Do they spend all of it? No, of course not. You wouldn't want to spend all of it. Uh, I don't know. I. You'd think they'd make, they'd probably save at least 30% or 40% off the top, you'd think. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because remember, because the, the money, the anything, anything that they have budgeted for that's outside of our visual range doesn't exist with, with the, you know, in, in space terms. So the ISS, yeah, there's a physical model built inside a Boeing plane, but that is pennies on the dollar compared to what they're charging the taxpayers to say that it's 400 miles up. And all those parts that they charge for, oh my God, the, the parts for the space station that probably don't even get used. All the replacement parts that they have to buy from companies and then just put in a warehouse somewhere and <laughs> not use them. Uh, all right, Mark, well, uh, can I get in well, two more quick questions before uh, you get out of here? I know you said sure, you had got, to run soon. Um, Admiral Byrd went on that Long Jeans Chronoscope. Long Jeans Chronoscope. He says there's an area the size of the United States never before seen by human eyes. Yep. How do you think he knew that? Be, that's kind of a tricky one because you could take it you could take it a couple different ways. Was he saying I think at the beginning he was saying there's land basically he's saying that there's a whole bunch of land past 
in, in Antarctica we haven't explored yet. They haven't been seen with human eyes, and that was him kind of showing his, his ego, saying, look, if I haven't seen it, nobody's seen it, because I'm the greatest explorer of all time. But he, he could have been saying that, well, at the very least, that's, that's what he was saying, but I think he was kind of implying that Antarctica was much bigger than they thought. And the, all, could have also been the reason why his death was coinc, you know, conveniently tied to the end of Operation Deep Freeze. You know, Deep Freeze ended in 56. He died in 57, supposedly, of a heart, you know, heart attack in his home. But I think it was because he was you know, as much of a man of integrity as you could get. And they were afraid that he wasn't going to be able to... Because he liked doing press conferences. He was natural on television. And he was natural. That wasn't the first time he'd been do, on something. We were lucky to get that that footage. And I think they figured out, it's like, yeah, again, it, the, the one thing I've learned about the authorities, they do not take chances. They do not roll the dice. If they look at a guy and say, I don't think we can trust him entirely, then uh, they'll they'll do what they can. And, you know, he was older, so why not? But, yeah, I, I do think that he, he thought at that point that at least Antarctica was very, very big. And didn't know because remember there's no satellites or even things that we claim to be satellites. All they had was propeller planes back in fifty. That interview was in fifty four. So who how, he he knew there was something very very big out there, but he didn't know how big. And I think it was even bigger than he expressed. If you look at some of the the maps, even that that thousand year old map, I know it seems like a narrow band, but between the coastline of Antarctica and the outer rim of Antarctica seems to be several thousand miles wide you know depth mm -hmm. before you got to it at the least and huge um huge land masses if you compare them to the like america itself i mean there's some oh, size those, of continents. those continents were massive all all of them seemed to be the size of africa or bigger, yeah, or bigger. and what you know what i liked about them is they were all spaced apart there were no land bridges between them and that would be kind of make sense because if you want to do something with some sort of indigenous population you want to have them, you know, most of the wars that we deal with in our civilization are because we have land bridges. Asia has just been a freaking mess. That's why the United States worked out so well, because, there, you know, it was there was big oceans on both sides. And in Asia, there's, there's, you're fighting over the same stretch of land for thousands of years. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, Mark, one yeah. more thing before you do head out. Sure. So in your model that you presented in the clues with yep. the dome being formed of a material yes. that is similar to the material that pipes the lava through the world that's yeah. still your model i do i i know i'm not going to back down from that i i'm it, just it, asking that no no no, no it's okay i did i know i got there. i got crap for for doing the um uh the the lava clue because look i i had to explain all of it because sooner or later someone was going to ask about it well, hey, right. even Aaron Dover says there's no lava on flat oh, Earth, so I'm not, I'm not dissing yeah. you for that. No, I'm no, no, saying no. this it, outer ring idea with the dome closing. Oh, no, no, I still, I still, together? I still believe in in both, and and here's why, because I'm looking at one of the dome things right now. The um, when it comes to the outer dome, there were certain moves that the authority made that seemed to indicate it, it goes in line with human male instinct. And the first thing was the atomic weapon testing that went on from 58 to 62, where they just, everything the Russians, I'm sorry, the Soviet Union and the United States fired for four years was straight up to, to a certain degree. I mean, they were firing at different angles, but they didn't do any ground testing. It was all straight up. Why would both nations do the straight up stuff simultaneously for so long and using such huge, I mean, the first one, seriously, those first three shots were megatons, megatons, and megatons were they were brand new. That was a brand new term back in the late 50s. We, we only had kilotons up until that point. The, that was a human instinct. That is, if a, once they figured out we were in a wall, the first thing we do, well, let's see if we can breach it. And so for, for the outer, for the, for the barrier, the dome, that was one of the first things for me. Like, look, they find the, the edge. They try to bust through it. They can't. So that, then they have to militarize space. And then they shut down the upper border and the outer border simultaneously. Everything they did from in the 1950s and into the early 1960s just screamed that they were trying to place the warning signs without freaking out the public. 
which was the first thing, you know, Van, the coincidence that Van Allen announces the Van Allen radiation belts in 1959 and the Antarctic Treaty is ratified in 1959. And that's the upper edge and the outer edge simultaneously. That's exactly what I would do. That, that was the big thing. I tried to, to empathize with this and, and say that if I would do it, I love putting myself in other people's shoes. And if I would do it, if I agreed with the, you know, I, I don't care. I'll put myself in the government's shoes and say, okay, I can see why you did that. It, the greater good, I understand the concepts. Sometimes I don't agree with the ethics behind it, but I do understand the concepts. When it came to the lava thing, that was just a, that was just logic, which was, look, if it's organic, think of, think of what you're going to do. And I don't know if you, any of you guys have ever had this. Like if you had a pet snake or a pet, pet tarantula and you put it in a terrarium, is anything in that terrarium outside of your control? You know, fine, you, you put in a light in there and a nice little water bowl and some bugs and some other stuff. Is anything going to be organic about what's, what, what's that tarantula's home or that scorpion? No, no, it's not. Everything's going to be in control. The glass walls, uh, the, the lid, the, every, you know, the, the air that's blowing through it, the little fun little plants and vegetation. Whatever you're going to do, it's going to be completely, uh, completely monitored. It, the only t the, the problem that people had with the volcanic system was it's it really takes you've got to stretch your mind a bit you've got to know a lot of science fiction and you've got to you get, because it's something really I haven't touched in science fiction which is could you simulate uh, a volcanic system could you do it with you know mechanically yeah yeah you, you could if you had the right tech you would have to have a unified field engine to do it but you could absolutely do it and here, here's the biggest point about that, and that is, of all the systems that are out there, you know, don't, don't, don't sell the other systems short, like the, <clears throat> the, um, uh, the underwater conveyor system and the jet stream, and everything else that's going on. Those systems, oh, those, those are also organic. So when it comes to the lava system, if I'm sorry, they're, they're, they're mechanical. So if the, if the lava system wasn't controlled you're putting a lot of risk and a lot of faith in a system that the big the biggest system that could completely wipe out everything i mean seriously we all know what a super volcano is one super volcano and this show is over is it <laughs> we already know this so you're not going to risk that you know your prized tarantula is down there i'm not calling this tarantula but you know what i get you do not want to you're not going to let that system just blow up on its own everything is going to be completely monitored now, could there be an organic process to this? Yeah, I suppose here and there, but you're still going to know. You're, the, luckily for us, we stay away from the fire. Uh, you know, the, the volcanoes, not many, not many cities have been built right next to volcanoes. And we all know the ones that have been. We all know the horror stories. So, and, and there's not that many volcanoes out there, active ones. So, all right, so who bought us at the pet store or who owns that pet store? I mean, <laughs> really? Okay, that's that's gonna be the one. You I know what I'm saying. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it can only be one of it can only be one of two things. <laughs> all right. An advanced civilization or that that's bigger than us, you know, the you know, could be the version one. If we're version seven, uh, you know, who's version five? When was who was occupying this place when Pangaea, when it was a supercontinent? Uh, so they came back and created this. This wasn't a natural system. No, no, right? no. I'm not, not necessarily. The um, I'm just trying to get it no, straight. No, no, it's okay. The was version one the creators, or was version one the people that were placed inside it? That's the tough one. Because then, if you start going down the biblical road, then you probably have some theories there. Uh, <laughs> is, it, no. is it is it divine, or did God subcontract out the work? You don't know. We're not going to know until whoever it is show up. But don't take whatever you know, whatever you see in the mainstream news at, at face value, because you can bet that whoever you know, that our powers that be, not the ones above them, they're going to try to spin this that will benefit them. So whatever. That's what I think the dome is. Is their next level of spin they had in place for those of us who woke up to the fakery of the heliocentric model, how it can't possibly work. It just doesn't work. We wake up to this flat, still area we're in, and okay, well, we got to trap them now. Let's trap them in this mental dome. Hmm. That they can't get maybe, out of. maybe. I mean, it's it's possible. No, no question. I've heard that one. I, I, I again, I try. I'm trying to. Ho I'm hoping for a better, better story end than that. See, that's action. me. I'm the, I want the glass half full. That's me too. 
All right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for, you know, a big song and dance number for, for act three, something, something cool. Uh, you know, I, you know, we've seen so many disaster movies. I'd hate to think that it'd just be that it's like, all right, well, you know, let's just let the people kill each other. I would hope it wouldn't end to something like that. I'd, I'd like to think it would be a, a cooler ending than that. Anyway, any, any parting shots from you guys before I head just, off? Just, into the... just a quick question of clarity. Yeah. What, what were the Russians and Americans firing at the dome? Why or what? What? Oh, you want to go into the question of if there were atomic weapons or not? Well, that, that seems a logical question. We're told that's what they were I, doing. No, no, I mean, if, 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 team members analyzed the footage considerably. He's no longer with us, but he analyzed the footage considerably, and we, we saw quite a bit of trickery. I, I tend to go the other way. Okay, it's not going to, it's not going to, again, I'm not going to lose sleep over this. I was a big fan of the documentary movie called Trinity and Beyond. I don't know if that's what he watched. The one that was narrated by Bill Shatner. And I can tell you this, because I'm a big special effects guy and a big movie guy. And I know the effects from that era. And the effects from that era were horrible. Now, yeah, you can say, well, no, they did Tornado and the Wizard of Oz. I'll go, yeah, okay, that one was pretty good. But atomic weapon testing, when you have to do the footage, at the very least, fine, if you don't want to say there's fission, fine. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, do we have some very, very powerful explosives? Yes, we do. If you if you have any doubt, look at the footage from... Right, so yeah. that then begs the question, if yeah. it's not atomic and it's not activating, because there's then the supposition about satellites and activation of the dome and re need for reactivations at la 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 la. Yeah. That then, so the question I'm asking then, that all then relates to that point of, if it's not... Because we can all blow shit up with really powerful bombs. Yeah. But the point of the nuclear testing was supposedly a subterfuge to activate the dome, wasn't it? In terms of some narratives. Yeah, in terms of some, sure. Or they were trying to... For me, it was more of a mapping. Because you have to... With something that big, you can't send surveyors up. So you, the only thing you can send is rockets up, and regardless of what the explosives were made out of, you can at least measure burst versus altitude and see where these rockets went. And you have to do that eventually, because if you're going to fake a space program, you need to know the curvature dimensions of this place. If you're going to fake a space program, because you need to send rockets up sooner or later, and those rockets have to bend over and follow a certain path because you don't want them crashing into things because it doesn't take too long. It's like, hey, these rockets start crashing at 500 miles or whatever it is. You know, wonder what's happening. I don't think it's just the rockets that are bending over, but I, I've, got a, parting, <laughs> I I, I've got, got a parting question for okay, you. Okay, what do you got? What you got? Um, it, it, you've probably read the, the novel that was written with you in it. Have you read that? I have read part of it. The one that was sent to me? Uh, I don't know. There was a novel I, I read about a year ago, and it had Patricia Steer in it. And um, No, I haven't read uh, that. You were flying out across the Antarctic in a in a jet. Have you not? Uh, a year I'll, ago? I'll send that to you. Yeah, send, I'll, send, I'll send that to me. Ago, Email yeah. that to me. I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah, had a fan fiction of this new to me. Odd, <laughs> odd page art. It's a 90, you know, plus page novel. Anyway. I think, okay, I, well, so I may, actually, I may have read it, but I didn't know it was, a, I didn't know it was a year old. I got something not that long ago. Because it had been that long. Right, right. Well, but uh, send it, I send was just going to say, yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll drop that over to you. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad. Great I'm glad. Um, of it, but um, uh, what I was going to say is, um, you know, if you were if you were given the opportunity of an empirical adventure, say to the Antarctic or the Arctic or whatever, w would you would you go? The Antarctic, yeah. I mean, it'd be miserable. I'd rather be shot in the space. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Antarctic. I'm not a big fan of. Um, I mean, I like cold better than hot, but the Antarctic is brutal. Plus. The, there's not enough landmarkers out there. They could send you anywhere you wanted. Remember, the GPS yeah. system is still DOD, and it's, you know, try I don't know, think you can go out anywhere and, well, and use that system out there. But I but I definitely do a space one. 
Not that they'd ever send me up there, but I'd definitely do a space one. So, All right. Uh, I mean, the, um, the the crux of the question was, you know, if, if Matt Powerland gave you uh, an invitation, open invitation to join him on the next Oh, on the Antarctic? To, yeah, you know, I'd go in, with him, of course. Would you go? Yeah, I would. would. I wouldn't. I would not enjoy it, but I'd go. You've seen all those films, haven't you, about the, uh, you know, the polar expeditions? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It looks like a <laughs> they whale start of the eating time. each other. And... Oh yeah, not not no. The Donner Party, I would never want to. Yeah, <laughs> especially with Matt in the room. Good lord. Well, he started he start looking at people to eat even before. <laughs> <Grant>. <laughs> All right, Mark. Uh, we're gonna let you go. We'll keep you here all night. Seriously. No, no. Okay, I got. I got to run. Any, any last, yeah, last one more. Shut up. No. Anyway, no, it's been an absolute pleasure. All right. Um, Thanks, guys. I do have one thing for you, Mark. Real quick. Uh, Not a question. Right. Real quick for you. All I need is a favor from you, if you don't mind. Sure. Just a real quick little drop for the Iron Real Media here. Just listening to Flat Earth Friday, Iron Real Media, blah blah blah. This is Mark Sargent. You know how they do. Just give a quick little oh, drop. Oh, sure, sure. I would appreciate um, you want to do it. Do it right now. Yeah, if you would, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, everyone. It's Mark Sargent, creator of Flat Earth Clues, and you are listening to me on Iron Realm Media. Check them out. Beautiful. Thank you. That's so awesome. awesome. Thank you, sir. Mark, <laughs> thank you so much, man. You're an Thanks, guys. It was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, don't, don't hesitate to uh, ask me again. Excellent. Hey, awesome. a, thanks, thanks, thanks chat, mate. Enjoyed it. Thank hey, guys. you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, yep. Thanks, brother. See you later.